What's up everybody? My name is Vin Drake from Cat's Cozy Games. Today, I'm going to show you how to automate your crafts in Blood Magic. We're going to take a look at how to automate slates in the Blood Altar, as well as craft items seamlessly in a World Accelerated Chemistry set. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, the first thing that I'm going to show you all is how to craft in the Blood Altar. Now we have two different altars. I can go into this a little bit more later in the tutorial. But basically we are getting our blood at this point in the game from an extreme entity crusher that's in the Well of Suffering ritual mode. And then there, here's our Well of Suffering ritual. And that is providing blood to this altar, which is also being soaked into this blood orb, which is part of our um, personal blood network that you can see at the top left there. Uh, we have 1 million LP there. And then it's just going into this super tank full of life essence. And then that is actually draining into our main... Um, like fluid storage network in applied logistics. And then I'm bringing it over here. This is not entirely necessary to share it with your network like this, with the exception of a handful of crafts in applied logistics, but I do like having a central fluid storage um, for the life essence. And I'll show you, actually, this is not too bad to, to make happen. It's actually, it actually works out pretty well. Um, so I am providing, there's a pump on here. We're actually using a dual interface just to provide the life essence. And the reason a lot of people may not do this is because of these runes of dislocation. So these actually help the input output speed of your blood altar. Normally you can only pump blood in and out of the altar at a very slow rate, actually. I believe it's 20 liters per second. Um, but what you can do is you can add these runes of dislocation. Each one will multiplicatively increase that amount, that rate, by 50%. And eight is actually the exact number that you need to match the crafting speed of the altar. Now, if we were to put more speed runes in this, which are not too difficult to craft, um, and you will probably want these on here. When you get more speed runes, you probably will want to, well, you will want to make more runes of dislocation as a result. But um, because this is multiplicative, you probably only need a couple more to match probably the rest of the altar's speed runes. Like if I filled the rest of the altar space with speed runes, um, you would probably only need eight more of these, maybe? Just because of how, you know, multiplication works in that regard, so. Um, I do like these. These are a bit of a pain to craft. You look up a uh, dislocation. You know, they're, they're not the easiest things in the world, but um, especially if you have arcane infusion automated already, shouldn't be too bad. So, what I'm going to show you is exactly how we're able to craft slates in here without them being extracted prematurely. Because as you can see, we have an Ender IO conduit extracting, and we have a whitelist here. And so we have all these slates whitelisted. Here, here's the problem. If you put a blank slate in and you're trying to make a reinforced slate out of it, you know, here's the recipe for a reinforced slate. What's to keep that blank slate from actually exiting the altar prematurely because of the whitelist extract? Well, the way that we figured out how to do this is by renaming the slate. So in this case, in order to make a reinforced slate, we take this blank slate initially and we rename it. The way you do this, you actually need to do this in GTNH way later down the line, like when you start using the assembly line in late IV, early LUV. Um, you actually have to rename items occasionally. And the way you do that is you create this. It's called a mold, parentheses name. Just make a casting form, put steel in it and you get that. And what you do is you take this to an anvil and you rename it to whatever you want. And so in this case, we have it renamed to just rename one because some, you'll need to rename things multiple times sometimes um, with the assembly line later on. So uh, we'll have rename two, rename three, etc. But for this case, we just need rename one. And I can show you exactly where we have that set up. By the way, if you're enjoying the content and you want more GTNH, please like the video and subscribe. And also, come watch me and my wife, Kat, stream GTNH every Monday through Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're on a streaming channel called Cat's Cozy Games, and we're on all the streaming sites, Twitch, YouTube, and Kick. Hope to see you all there. And without further ado, back to the video. So over here, we have our forming press multi-block, the industrial material press. And down here, let me see if I can find this real quick. One of these input buses, this one right here. We actually put the rename one uh, mold in here. And then we have an interface, and then we just make a recipe. I can show you exactly what this recipe looks like as well. Uh, let me put this in here. You have to make one of these, and then you can basically bring this in here. You have the blank slate here. 
and then you put the rename one, the renamed blank slate right there, and then you are pretty much good to go. So let me put this back and then I can show you all what happens with that. Basically what happens is the slate goes in here, Oop, getting mixed up with my alters. This blank slate goes in here and it doesn't get extracted because it's already renamed. So let's go ahead and order a couple of those. I've got a crafting terminal over here. Um, yeah, reinforce slate. As you can see, the rename one version of that is there as well. Um, we could just request like 10, something like that. And there is our reinforced slate. It actually got extracted so quickly we barely even saw it. But yeah, uh, it's as simple as that. And as long as you, you know, rename an item that is whitelisted here, that needs to be placed here for a sort of recursive or like a future craft, a nested craft, so to speak, uh, you should have no problems with this whatsoever. And if we just soup up this altar, put a bunch of speed runes, everything, we should be really good to go. Now I can show you um, what we've got going on here. If you've never seen the Well of Suffering ritual, by the way, very simple. You need to make sure that this ritual mode is checkmarked here on the Extreme Entity Crusher. And I believe you need to leave this off until after you do the Well of Suffering ritual. Basically, you take your uh, a Diviner uh, Wand. Is that what it's called? Diviner? Yeah, Diviner Wand. And you shift right click in the air until you can find uh, the one you're looking for. The one you're looking for is called the Well of Suffering. And there are a lot of these. So you basically have to be really careful. I don't know if you can toggle back. So just be careful that you don't pass it. There we go. There's our Well of Suffering ritual. So we put down the Master Ritual Stone. Make sure you have enough normal ritual stones in your inventory. And looks like, I think we put this down seven or eight blocks, something like that. Um, and then you basically right click the Master Ritual Stone and then there you go. And you should never have problems with blood supply ever again, theoretically, for your blood magic setup, which is nice. All right, I want to show you guys one more thing, and that is how to automate the alchemic chemistry set. I struggled with this for a little while, and so we basically figured out a way to um, provide items to it in a blocking mode fashion without actually using blocking mode. The problem is that items can stack in here, and basically your item, you can have conflicts, or you just have spaces filled that you don't want filled, and the items don't craft correctly so some people and i did this on a previous run we actually used an alchemy uh, chemistry set for each individual craft which one is quite annoying to set up it's a lot of chemistry sets but two you can't world accelerate that or you could but you'd have to put one on every single chemistry set which is a big pain so there actually is a much easier way to do it the key ingredient to getting this to work is on your interface uh your me interface you have to select this option right here. Make sure blocking mode is off, first of all. And then you need insert to empty slots only. First to last does not merge stacks. That way you don't get items clogged up in here. Um, the reason blocking, so this acts almost like blocking mode does. And the reason you want that is, yeah, so you don't clog stuff up. If you had blocking mode on, then nothing would ever go in here because it does detect the master blood orb. So make sure you have that option set that way and then you should be in very good shape with this. Now, the one other problem is, okay, you want a World Accelerator on here, but maybe you don't want it on all the time. How do we control this with Redstone? First of all, take your World Accelerator, you're going to put a Machine Controller cover, enable with Redstone. And then we're going to do an ME Level Emitter. And this is actually on a little tiny subnetwork. This red that you see here, this is the entire subnetwork. And we're going to just set this blank. And we're going to do uh, emit when levels are above or equal to limit. And we're going to set that limit to two. And I'll show you why in just a second. We're going to put a storage bus on the side of this. Um, and what we want to do is we want to detect when there's more than one item in here, essentially. Because the one item it's always going to detect is the blood orb, which is a requirement for your chemistry set. And the way that you detect these items, if you just slap a storage bus on here, it's not actually going to de detect the items. You have to select this right here, report inaccessible items. Yes, colon, items that cannot be extracted will be visible. Uh, unless you do that, it's actually not going to detect any of the items inside the chemistry set. So once you have that good uh, priority, doesn't matter. Yeah, just change that one little bit, keep on bi-directional and it will actually detect the items appropriately. So let me, uh, let me do a little example here. We just get some Terre. And let's see. How's that craft going? Just getting a little growth medium and boom, there it goes. And the redstone signal activates and your world accelerator turns on. 
So you're not wasting any energy on this thing. It only comes on when it actually needs to, and you are good to go. Um, very, very neat little setup, and definitely scalable. Once you get higher level world accelerators, this is going to go so quickly. Um, you're going to be in very, very good shape, and this should be all that you ever need, honestly, as far as I can tell. Oh, one other thing that I did want to note is that based on the tier of the Blood Orb that you have, we have a Master Blood Orb, which is kind of like a tier 4 Blood Orb, you actually need to make sure that your um, Blood Production Altar is the same tier as that orb. Uh, same tier or greater. So in this case, I was trying to do this with a tier 3 Altar, and it was actually limiting the amount of blood that we had in our Blood Network. So always make sure, that's why we have two altars that are identical to your, here. So just wanted to make a note of that. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that is going to call it for today. If you liked what you saw, please give us a subscribe and a like. And we will come at you with another tutorial video sometime soon. Until then, y'all have a great day.